guys, I want to introduce to you Cave, Coach Cave with Cardone University, Cardone Enterprise. Uh, he works for the amazing, talented Grant Cardone, and I'm really excited to introduce you guys on the podcast, Legally Exhausted. This is podcast number four, and wanted to introduce you Coach Cave. He is our coach for our business development, our marketing team, our sales team, whatever you want to call it. At the law firm, we have 10 people once a week jump on a call with Coach Cave and uh, listen to his words of wisdom. And uh, they watch Cardone University. And that Cardone University, I was just talking to him, it, it, it pumps me up. I love Grant Cardone. I love listening to Grant Cardone in the morning. I go for a walk. I listen to it because the mindset that he has is just so incredibly powerful. And I probably sound like a crazy person talking about him. If you think I'm crazy, read the 10X rule book and you'll know what we're talking about. But if you too lazy to read the 10X rule book, it's probably not for you, but that's what we got Coach Cave here for to drop some, some wisdom bombs. And we're gonna talk about what he's doing for our business. Um, go ahead and just introduce yourself. Tell us about yourself. Go for it. Thank you, Abe. Abe, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I want to say thank you very much. It's an honor to be on your podcast. Uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, if you don't know Grant Cardone, you should look him up. You know, he's a legend really in the space when it comes to business, sales, scaling, and anything else. Uh, and I had a, I been having a pleasure to work for him now for a year and a half, right? And I work on an LE team where we work with companies all across the, the globe, right? Mm -hmm. I have clients in Australia, in Jamaica, in Alaska, in Canada, uh, UK, France, you name it, right? So uh, we're changing life one business at a time, babe. Yeah. Right? Because at the end of the day, the economy, you know, is run by businesses and by sales. Mm -hmm. And lots of people that like sales, but the reality is the economy is really truly run mm -hmm. with sales. Definitely. Uh, and it's, it's amazing because... Uh, it blew my mind when I work with so many leaders or entrepreneur, right? And lots of our entrepreneur are, are doers, right? They're like, hey, let's do it. And they want to live the American dream. And, and it doesn't matter if they're in the States or not. I mean, we're blessed to be in the States because, you, you know, you, the capitalism and, you know, creating business. So a lot of business owners, they go in business and they, they just go with their gut and let's do it. However, it's really hard to scale a business mm -hmm. if your foundation of your business is not scalable right right and you you grow and you grow you grow and eventually you hit that nine hundred thousand, one million, and at one million you start struggling some might be able to scale to two three million but then they're stuck right mm -hmm. so our goal uh our ecosystem is huge and, and i know you know really well about our ecosystem our goal is to help companies you know they come in just like yourself with a card on you and then from there we teach them how to scale it what does it take to take it to 15, 50, 150, mm -hmm. 200 million. Take the company public, right? So the sky's the limit, but Definitely. the only limit you have is the limit you put on yourself. Yeah, that's and that's what I love about Cardone and your coaching sessions because the mindset change, I'm starting to notice it in the, in the marketing team that we have because originally they were not motivated, tired of getting turned down, tired of... Um, just getting rejected, which is sales, right? You go to 100 people in sales. And my, my mind of sales is you go to 100 people, you see who likes you, who doesn't like you, and you move on. And I'm okay with that. But doing that day after day, year after year, does get exhausting. And then uh, the other thing that I love about Cardone University is the follow-up. Yeah, you're going to get rejected. How many times is, does somebody get rejected? Um, you, you, there's a, a statistic you guys have about rejection and, and stuff like that, yeah, follow-ups. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and the reality is follow-up is really key because you have to follow through. Uh, you know, 90% of the salespeople after like two calls, they just give up. Right? Yeah. Uh, they're just being too reasonable. They're being too reasonable with themselves, too reasonable with their goals. However, 90% of the sales they close between the fifth and the 12th time then you touch base with someone, mm -hmm. right? Where 90% of the salespeople, they don't follow up. They do two calls of like, oh, well, next. Next, right? yeah, Where get me more leading. leads, get me more leads. There's no more leads. Follow up on the leads, I got you. Yeah, yeah. and you gotta follow through. And I mean, it, it happens a lot. I mean, in every single day, 
when you're buying something, you're working with a contractor, you name it, right? Mm -hmm. How many people, especially, I mean, you and I, we live in Florida, right? Uh, if you have any done any construction <laughs> work in your place, I have people who come to my place, took measurement, they didn't even send me a proposal. Yeah. <laughs> right? Rule That's number just, one, always send a proposal. <laughs> exactly, yeah. right? So, uh, so yeah, so Cardone U is super powerful. We have about 3,500 videos, which is, uh, you know, online. All these videos are super short, right? They go from three minutes to five minutes, three, four questions at the end to make sure we, we check their commitment uh, and their understanding. We have a great certification in place, right? And I mean, you're, you as a, you're a good leader, right? Because you have put also incentive for your team. So your team is like, they're really using it and they're mm -hmm. shifting. And that's, that's really the part of my job that I love because, you know, everything I do is for, for people. Like I, I am a kind of person that I love to give, right? I truly believe as human being, uh, our two needs of our soul is really contrib contribution and growth. And contribution is amazing, right? If you truly give to others uh, without expecting anything, you will get back. And I see that in my in my calls, in my coaching journey. People shift, people change. And I mean, your team, which you have an incredible team, and some of them that had some experience, some of them they didn't have much experience, but they're shifting, mm -hmm. right? And that shift is amazing to see that because, as you said, their mindset changes, right? They become more persistent. Um, and the reality is like lots of people go to college, university, even lawyers, right? Mm -hmm. Lawyers, they go to school, they study hard and they, they learn the law. But amazing lawyers are great salespeople, right? Mm -hmm. But in yeah, school, definitely. they don't teach you anything about sales. They don't mm -hmm. teach you about that persistent. They don't teach you about uh, rejection. And that's yeah. where, you know, that's what we do. We really help you with, and 80% of what we do you know, it's all mindset, 20% is technique. Mm -hmm. But you gotta get your mindset right in order to be successful, right? Definitely. And as an entrepreneur, it's exactly the same, right? Yeah, one of the one of the bombs that you dropped was sales is communication. And you're not, you're not a salesperson, your job is to communicate. You're a communications person. If you can communicate effectively, you can sell better. And that to me was like, that's so simple and it's true. And so now when the, uh, well, one of the things Cardone says too is if if I don't sell to you, it's not your fault. I did something wrong. I didn't go through the proper process. I missed a, uh, I skipped a step, something like that. But when you told me that it made it even clearer was like, I'm not in sales, I'm in communications. And that's, that's wisdom bomb right there. 100%, 100%. And you see like, uh, I've been in sales now for over 12 years, right? And my career actually started in the diamond industry. So Oh, you're gonna to hook work. me up, man. What's up? My <laughs> wife wants a new one. What's going on? Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Is it time for an upgrade? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely time for an upgrade. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it, I was watching a thing on uh, was it Marcus, Le, Marcus Lemoynes was uh, he went down to the diamond district in right. New York, and he was talking to the guys and he's like, the thing about diamonds is I don't know. I feel like I'm always getting scammed because I don't know if this is what four carats is, if this is what one carats is worth. The clarity, all you know, there's like four Ks, right? I don't, it's four Ks or four Cs? Four Cs. Four yeah. Cs. You know, there's four Cs. I don't know, one of those. Um, and so it's like, it's daunting to someone who buys a, you know, I buy diamonds for my wife when it's a wedding and then maybe as a gift once or twice a year that's it so i don't i always feel like i'm getting gypped <laughs> so i you know that's the thing he, he talked about that and maybe coming up with some kind of a um, system where people can tell because you really have to trust the person you're buying from to know that you're not getting gypped. Well, so well the system is already there oh it but, is there uh, okay but they're not going to share it with you. <laughs> it's not transparent. It's not transparent. Okay. Well, you know, and the, the diamond industry is a very interesting industry, you know, and uh, uh, I end up traveling to like 37 countries right after university and I was finding oh, wow. my voice and I'm actually writing a book uh, oh, cool. around, you know, my experience between cultures and shifting, right? Uh, and it's the book is really about purpose. So whenever uh, I'm going to have it, I will I want one of those right. copies signed. Let's go, bro. All right, Where, let's do You it. know, I got you. You know, oh. I got you. <laughs> so, um, and the interesting part, you know, I came across LVMH, Louis Vuitton, Moy, Tennessee, which is a you know billion dollar company, amazing company. And so 
although I knew a little about a little bit about sales, I'm like, I don't know nothing about diamonds, right? But I find a very good mentor and I came to the company. Uh, and this is really it. Like the reason that I was very good at what I, what I was doing, because I'm a good educator, right? Mm -hmm. And that coach was always within me, right? And the reality is the most expensive diamond I sold was a $1.7 million, right? Right. It's a, uh, my wife's uh, going to be pissed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a very, very nice transaction. How big was that? Like just, it was actually a fancy color. It was a seven carat, right? Wow. So, uh, very, very rare, very, very rare diamond. Right. Mm. And the reason that I was able to sell it, cause you know, at the end of the day, diamond is just a stone. That's all it is. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a rare stone, but it's just a beautiful rare stone, which even the value of it, we have created value for it. Mm -hmm. and that's all it is, right? Yeah. Uh, it is definitely the hardest substance substance on air, earth, right? Because mm -hmm. I mean, he diamond is not just used for for beauty, and most people they don't know that, right? There's a very small percentage of diamond that is used uh, for jewelry, but most of diamonds are actually used for industrial purposes. For example, when they drill holes into mountains, right? Mm -hmm those massive drills, they actually have diamonds in it, right? But oh, wow. they have such, like, they're, they have so much uh, inclusion, etc. So, and for example, Botswana, uh, it's one of the largest mining operation, mm. but very small percentage of those diamonds is used in the jewelry industry, right? Okay. So my point is, you know, in order to be a good salesperson, you first have to understand, you know, what are some of the main concern of, of your buyers and what's important to them. And then you have to educate them, right? Okay. There's an old saying, it says, eye to eye, eye to buy, right? Okay. So you have to become a great educator and a great communicator in order to become a good salesperson. However, most salespeople, they just over speak, right? Yeah. They just speak, 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 they just talk and, you know, uh, they just puke on people, right? Yeah. And that's where most of us, we get turned off. Right. Right. And we react to salespeople. Like how many times you went to a furniture store, right? Or a clothing store, right? And someone comes in and says, hi, sir, how are you doing today? You're like, no, 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 I'm okay. I, I, I'm just looking. Right. 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 I mean, we have done that all the time, right? Yeah. So it's the reaction we have to towards salespeople because most salespeople, they just come in and you feel that they're going to give you pressure. Mm -hmm. But the most amazing salespeople I've seen, and my goal is to train every and coach every people to to understand that great salespeople are actually great listeners right right they're able to Definitely. ask questions they're able to assess the situation understanding what are some of the you know some of the pleasure and some of the pain uh, of that customer right mm -hmm. and i mean your business is a great example of it right you work with lots of doctors uh and the reality is you're probably not the first business and they have done business with. Yeah. So There's a lot of other law firms that do what we do now. Uh, when I started 11 years ago doing what we do, it's called pip suits. When I start for the viewers, um, when I started doing that, uh, there was maybe 10 law firms and they didn't know how to market. They didn't do anything. And now everybody's marketing. Everybody's knocking on doors. Hey doc, I met you five years ago. I saw you in a hallway five years ago. Can I, can I talk to you and sell you my services? And it's tough now because maybe they had a bad experience with someone. Maybe they had a good experience with someone and they want to stay. Um, so it is tough. Yeah. Because there's a lot yeah. of competition. And the reality is, you know, uh, our business, it's so amazing because we have people like you who are a law firm. And uh, I have uh, one of my one of my first clients that I actually, when I started with Grant, they're an investigation group. Okay. Right. Which they're serving lawyers and et cetera. Right. Okay. And uh, these guys at the beginning, they were like, what is this? Like, I'm not a salesperson. Like I went to school to become a investigator, right? Mm -hmm. Why am I in a sales training? But, and they were all like, we're not salespeople. Like wh when you would set sales, they will have uh, <laughs> like a, a reaction. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> uh, but the reality now that team they have changed so much. And so many of them, they're like, oh my God, I didn't know that I was a salesperson. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Because at the end of the day, they go after the client, they have to open a file, they have to find what are some of the experiences they had in the past, how they can make it better. Yeah. 
and it's the same thing with your team like your team they're they're shifting a lot mm-hmm. in the past six months because before they would go in and they would tell everything then uh they could do for the client now they're being smarter right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they're asking better questions and to see if the client deal with another law group what was some of the, the issues they had right okay and yeah now they can create value for them right, right. and the reality value is a perception right? right you and i we could we could be going shopping right and we're going to look at the suit at uh, the same suit same same brand same dollar and you could pass by and have a look and say eh, that's not really worth it right mm-hmm. uh, i want something else where i can go look at the same suit and say oh man that's a nice suit right it's yeah. worth the money right, right it's worth the money so right. it's a perception value is a perception and guess what the value is money is a perception too because yeah. hundred dollar it's a different between someone who's living on a street or they can have a roof on their head and some other person like grant cardone could give a hundred dollar to a homeless which you know yeah it, it doesn't have the same value to that yeah, other person he'll, he'll lose he'll lose a thousand dollars and not even realize it exactly yeah. Right. Yeah. And so you, you brought up a good point. One is fact finding. Um, the, the marketing team is being more, uh, they're educated about fact finding now and they're asking the right questions instead of just giving the pitch. Oh, this is what we can do. Da, 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 da. And, um, you know, Cardone has such a great way of going about things because I've always known everybody has a past. So they don't realize that they're giving this guy the pitch who doesn't want the pitch. He had another lawyer work for him who stole from him, let's say, or who did such a bad job that he had some kind of problem, like a bit, like a like a legal problem or something going on. Yep. And um, he's just being nice. He's listening. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll take your card. I'll I'll take care. And then now that they have the fact finding and they're they're hitting it head on, they're saying, "Well, did you have another lawyer go through your files before?" Yeah, I did actually. And it's like, well, did you have a good experience? No, actually it was really bad. And so they're asking the, the, the right questions with the fact finding. And then and then you had mentioned another thing, which is everybody's in sales. The the investigators. I'm not in sales. I'm not everybody's in sales. And I, I, I get that from I think it was, it was definitely in one of the books, but it probably like the 10x book or one of these Be Obsessed or Be Average, which is another great book. Uh your my you know, my receptionist answers the phone. They're in sales how they answer the phone, that first contact with a client or, um, you know, first impression is so key. But my receptionists don't realize that. We've we've made them realize, right, Dennis? We, we got them on the, we got, so so I have Ovadia University built off of the same platform that Cardone has, which is, I mean, dude, he's like 10 years ahead of anybody else. He's like an Elon Musk for sales. He's freaky, man. Yep. And, um, I hope, I hope he hears this. <laughs> He's like, who's this guy who called me freak, man? <laughs> um, but uh, lightspeedvt.com is the platform that Cardone University is built on. Um, we put our own thing on there, and I'm, I'm building an Ovadia version of this for my staff. Amazing. So when we hire receptionists, their onboarding is, okay, watch the videos, learn the videos. And then I got this again at the, I was just at the 10X uh, business boot camp. Uh, yeah, after you get the certification, go ahead and watch it all again. Start over again because you're going to retain more info the second time. And so everybody's in sales whether they want to admit it or not because uh, somebody wants to come to me for a raise. They got to sell me on getting a raise. They can't just tell me, hey, Abe, I want a raise. Like, no, get out of here, you know? And that, and people don't know it's about communication. If they could communicate that better. Yeah. Um, so that's what I mean. Cardone University is just freaking awesome. The, the coaching that they get is heavily role-playing, right? You guys do a lot of role-playing? Yeah, which, you know, uh, the reality is anything that you want to get good at, right, you have to drill and practice. Mm-hmm. If you look at Michael Jordan, you know, Michael Jordan is not Michael Jordan because if he didn't practice, if you, and I'm, I'm sure lots of you, probably all of you have watched Michael Jordan on uh, his documentary on Netflix, right? That's pretty good. I've seen which that. Which is yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. And his persistent, him showing up every morning, just hoop after hoop, just keep on shooting, right? Mm-hmm. So the reality is repetition brings mastery. Yeah. But in communication skills, it's the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. If you're not going to 
practice, drill, and rehearse, you're going to have a hard time, right? And and what we really teach, as you said, it is not is not sales. It's it's mindset and communication skills. Mm-hmm. How many law offices or medical offices then you call, and they all sound the same, right? Right. Welcome to XYZ. What can I help you? Welcome to XYZ. What can I help you? Right. Mm-hmm. How cool would it be then you call the office and they actually answer the phone totally differently? Right. And you're like, wait, that was different. Already your your experience as a consumer, it's different. Right. And, and you see, this is what I love about what we do. You know, it's uh, lots of sales company, right? Technology company, they use manipulation or uh, gimmicks, which I like to call it, right? I remember mm-hmm. when I started like, you know, 12 years ago in sales, I was like reading books and looking at audio and stuff like that. There's so much nonsense out there. Uh, hey, you know, look into the left eyes connected to the, this part of the brain, conscious mind, unconscious mind. Uh, I'm sure you have heard this. Like, you know, if someone moved their arm, make sure you move your arm. Like, right. you know, those stuff doesn't work anymore. Yeah, mirroring, that's cool, yeah. right? Yeah. What what was working 50 years ago, mm-hmm. it doesn't, doesn't work that way anymore. Yeah. Because the consumers are smarter now. Plus right? they have a phone in their hand. So it's very mm-hmm. easy to be like, man, I'm just going to go over here. <laughs> yeah, they have access to information, right? Yeah. So that's where you as a as an owner, as a business owner, you cannot manipulate people anymore, right? You have to serve them, right? You have to serve them and you have to find that edge to set yourself apart in the marketplace. And Grant talks about this all the time, right? He's like, if you cannot market your sales process to your customer, then you're doing something wrong, mm-hmm. right? The integrity is not where it sh- should be, right? And uh, one thing that I love about our company, we are like an open book, right? We share with our customer everything we do, Mm -hmm. right? The curtains are wide open, right? From our sales process, from our accountability, everything. So, uh, and our customers, they love that, right? That's why, you know, even yourself, right? You've been following Grant for for years now, right? Since I, so I got, with uh, Grant Cardone, I saw his stuff. I'm like, who is this guy? He's so annoying. (laughs) And uh, that that logo of the 10X, the one that you have on your lapel pin uh, is on a book. And I, in the middle of the pandemic, the pandemic just started and I was like, you know what? I let me get audible. And I started going for walks because I was like, I don't want to die. So I was was like, I was overweight. So I started going for long walks, like hour long walks in the morning. And I started listening to Audible. And then I I came across that. It kept popping up, popping up. I said, all right, I'll do it. So I got the 10X and I instantly hooked. He's like drugs. He's so good, which drugs are bad, but he's phenomenal. (laughs) Um, And so that's how I got hooked on him in the pandemic. Like I want to say like April, March, something like that. I listened to his book and then I listened to um, 10X, be obsessed or be average, sell or be sold. Um, the millionaire handbook or whatever. Um, probably like an, I, I listened to some tape he had of him at a, like giving a speech, like right. an hour long speech. Right. Um, I mean, the guy is a freaking rock star. He's, he's so awesome. And so um, the reason I went with Cardone University is I'm coming back to the office. I'm listening to for him like an hour every day in the morning and I come to work and I'm so amped up. It's, it's like 10 cups of coffee, the yeah. energy he gives. And I, I'm talking to the staff doing my daily meeting with the staff and they're, and they're looking at me like, this guy's a freak. What is Abe talking about? He's like, he's, is he on drugs? What are you talking about? And I'm like, you don't understand. Like, you know, go massive, go passive, be obsessed or be <laughs> average. You know, I'm like the hustle muscle, the hustle muscle. And they're like, this guy's we- Abe, you're weird, man. And I'm like, no. So I got the sales team on Cardone university so they could experience and actually, I had a conversation with you um, a couple, like uh, two months in. Kave, you know, I paid for this program. The staff, they, they don't want to do the extra work. They're either they're taking eight. I had one. We had to kick them off the thing. Eight hours to watch five videos, and for those who are watching, the videos are five minutes long on average. So he took eight hours because that's what he said. He kept failing the test because there's a five minute video. And then a three question test, yep. let's say. Yep. And he, if you miss one, you got to rewatch the whole video. 
So he he literally kept. Well, failing. if you miss one, you gotta retake the test. Right? Okay. So if there's okay. let's say if there is the video is four minutes, then at the end there's three questions. Okay. So if you miss one of the questions, then you have to go back and try the questions again. Okay. And I mean these are all simple easy questions, questions yeah. right? Uh, if you listen and you pay attention, then you should get it right. But if you fail the question again, then you have to go back, which is forcing you know the you know your employees to pay attention. Right, right, right. They can't just be texting while they're watching the videos. And stuff right, like that. right. Yeah. This guy took eight hours, so I got zero productivity out of him for the day, and he still failed all the videos. Like, he, he had a horrible pass rate, you know? So I, I had a call with you, and Chris was on the phone, and we were, like, talking, and I'm like, Coach Kave, I don't know what to do. I, I'm like, they don't want to do the videos. And so we came up with an incentive plan to get them to watch the videos, and now they're watching the videos. And now their mindset is shifting to growth and expansion and hard, uh, working harder, you know, and uh, it's, it's just more optimistic, more uh, teamwork type of environment. And, and, and now they're talking to me and I'm like, oh, they get it. They're speaking my language now. I'm not crazy. They were ignorant and now they're they're learning. And some of these people have been in sales for 10, 20 years on my team. Right. But right. they just don't have that mindset that Grant has, which is freaky. But it's awesome. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And you know, that's where that's most uh unfortunately it's most society, right? Because there is you know, we live on one of the richest countries on the planet, uh, where there's millionaires are created every single day, but there is seventy four percent of people who are living paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Is because of their mindset. When are we going to get all of Florida? First of all, we know that Florida has the best governor in the United States right now. When are we going to get Grant and DeSantis in a room? Every Floridian, if they want to graduate high school, has to pass card on you. <laughs> when are we going to do it, man? Let's get Grant on the. Let's get him in a room together. Let's come up with some stuff. Florida <laughs> like would go. That. Florida would explode with revenue. Yeah. If they knew what was in that program and it's cheap, like it's what is it like a hundred bucks a month for individual users, right? Something like that. Yeah. I mean, we, we have multiple, multiple packages, right? So we have the individual, but the corporate package, which gives you all the bells and whistles with, uh, you get accountability, you get like graphs and you, you get reports like automation and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And, uh, we can also like custom made our platform, right? I don't know if you, you knew that, right? So we do something which is called like the white label, right? Okay. So we can create, it doesn't have to be Carter University. It could be Ovadilla University, okay. Okay. which would be all your logo, all, all your stuff. And uh, and you can also put your videos, right? Oh, we could add my videos yeah, to it. Yeah, you can add your videos, oh. right? Okay. So the, you probably maybe didn't know that. So we need, we need to talk. We, we got to talk to Brandon we, over there. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> we'll... we'll Brandon's in trouble right now, the sales guy, he's in trouble. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, um, so, which which is great, because now they also get ownership, okay. right? Because when they get ownership, because it's your platform, uh, okay. it's branded so, for you. So is it, it's, it's Grant in the videos, yeah. and then I can add it, and I can I can drag and drop which videos I want, yeah. which and I don't And you okay. can change the background, right? So so oh. the background could be all Ovadia, and it says Ovadia University. Oh, so cool. okay. So I have lots of clients who, who they have the white label, right? So, okay. Uh, so all of those options are 100% are available, yeah. And uh, then you can add also your HR videos, right? Really, okay. Like sexual harassment, you, you name it, right? Whatever, okay. whatever training that you have created. So you can add that. So so it's become super powerful, super super powerful. That's cool. And the reality is like, people like to be in an environment and a culture where they keep on learning and keep on growing, right? When you find good people in the marketplace and they come and work for you, if you're not able to challenge them, right, and and push them for them to be better, after a while they you know they lose their motivation, right? And mm -hmm. what happened? They start looking next door, right? And we all know. Sometimes the grass is greener on the other side, which is not true, right? Definitely. But so you have to create that culture. Uh, you know, you, I know you've been to lots of our events and stuff like that, right? And I know in the last weekend, Sherry, which is our CEO, she, you know, she was talking about. She was awesome. Right. I want her. I want her so <laughs> bad. I was, I was like, I need, I need one of her. She's great. Yeah. Yeah. 
What, what did you like about when she was talking about culture? Man, where do I start? So um, you are like, this is like, oh my God, give me an opportunity to tell you yeah. everything <laughs> I love about the program. So so I just went to the business boot camp, a set business, business boot camp, yes. a 10X business boot camp, Turnberry Resort. Um, by the way, I did call out Brandon a second ago. Brandon is a freaking beast. The guy sold me in the, in the, in the, in the hallways, right? He sold me the uh, growth, con, two growth con tickets, four freaking sales essentials tickets. Um, my wife is now at the 10X ladies event as we speak right now. Um, she's there and uh, he sold me something else. This guy, I'm like, I'm like, Brandon, you're gonna bankrupt me, leave me alone. <laughs> and he goes, but Abe, don't you wanna grow your business more? Don't you wanna make more money? This is how you do it, man. You gotta, you, you know Cardone, you gotta get your team on Cardone. So now, uh, now we got six sales tickets that he sold me, and uh, in November they're going there. But um, it, her name's Sherry, right? Right. Sherry. Right. She was a rock star. She was there. She said, uh, first of all, the whole energy in that room was out of this world energy, and she brought even more energy to it. And in that culture, like the room was eighty percent men, and there was a lot of like I would call them alpha males, like like hardcore, like screaming, like, ooh, ooh, you know, excited. And she came in and didn't matter, you know, um, didn't matter at all. She was at that same level. Like she's able to talk to guys like that who, who, who you know. But anyways, the thing I liked the most about her was talking about her 905 meetings. I don't, what do you guys call those meetings at 9.05 in the morning? Yeah, it's our morning. It's our morning meeting, morning which is meeting. part of our culture. We do it every single day. Every day. Yeah. I want to implement that in my office. My wife was with me at the conference, and she was so amped when she heard. She's like, I'm coming to your office. I'm doing the 9.05s. And I was like, babe, come on. I'm like, I'm like, so so our problem is we have five offices. We have four in the U.S. and one in Colombia. Right, right. And I'm like, how do I do that? I don't think I could do it. You guys, during the pandemic, I was talking to Brandon, you did them by Zoom. Yeah, we do it virtually too. You do yeah. do it virtually? Yeah. Is yeah. it better? It's better live. Of course, because, you know, the energy in the room, it's it's just next level. Yeah. But however, you know, during pandemic, we still we still did it. So the uh, you still get that energy through, through virtual. Uh, but, you know, it's all about the culture. You know, I, I have yeah. to say... Before coming to work for Grand, I used to work for a company where we were making like $1.6 million a day, right? So wow. very, but the company didn't have the same kind of culture we have, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, in a culture of a company, it's so important. It's, it's a strong pillar, which is hold the system and it helps people to want to be there right it's also yeah. bring advocacy people talk about it i mean we put our culture every single day beside google or apple right and you're going to come to our office uh, i'm coming to check out the morning meetings i'm so stoked yeah i think go. on wednesday i'm going to be there okay grant cool. grant is sending me the helicopter here in boca we're going to fly over to aventura you guys have a helicopter landing pad on the roof or what? We actually have two helicopters, but in, in the but building next door, we the, do. Yeah. Oh, in the building next door, yeah, okay. Which we're so, part of our office might be moving there, so. Oh, cool. <laughs> so um, so we're actually just driving over, but <laughs> no no cool helicopter. <laughs> but um, uh, I'm really stoked about going. We're going to check out the 905 meetings. I really want to do those. She said, we do the 905 meeting for many reasons. One, if you're not at your desk at 9 o'clock, you're not ready for the 905 meeting, you're getting written up. We don't want you here. Because if you can't be here at nine nine o'clock, you, you don't have the mindset or the motivation. If you're on time, work. you're late. If you're on time, you're late. That's another Cardonism. I love this guy. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm notoriously late for everything. And since getting in the Cardone University stuff, I'm on time. I'm on time or early. I'm early. Um, but you know, I'm on time for Miami, which is on time. Everybody in Miami is 15 minutes late. So, um, but, uh, another reason is she said, um, to, you know, to the room, she said, I can spot who's leaving and who's unmotivated instantly by scanning the room when I'm giving my, is it a 15, 30 minute meeting? Something like that. Yeah. Our meetings are very short, right? Okay. Cause you know, uh, pretty much by nine 30, right. The marketplace is open. So let's yeah. go. Okay. Yeah. But so, those mini guards are amazing, right? Because it's, it's really focused on, on, on results, 
right, on wins. Yeah, continue. So, so you guys talk, so yeah, great. So you guys talk about your wins, your results from the day prior mm -hmm. and like your, your, your victories, you celebrate successes. Yep, yep. And then you tell them about it, you're transparent to the staff about it so that they move forward and say, we did a million dollars yesterday. Let's do 1.5 today. Let's do two. You get so so at my company, we've become more transparent about um, the money coming into the firm, and and a lot of law firms shy away from money, but we've been going into it because I if you don't know, you can't grow. Right. So if you don't see, okay, we brought in a million dollars this week or this month or this quarter, you can't strive to get two million. You're just you're just doing. You're doing. You're not. There's no goal setting right in place. Right. Um, and so, so I was, I was so impressed. They showed us a clip of the video from the 905 meeting. And um, on top of that, she said, look, people have personal problems. They had a bad night's sleep, a fight with their spouse. They come into work. We erase all of that by just putting tons of energy into the room at the 905 meeting. She's like, I can't make their problems go away. If they have financial problems, I can't make that go away. But I can get rid of it from their mind at 9.05. Right. It's gone. Because she brings in so much energy into that room that it's gone. And so um, that's another thing. Because, you know, listen, like you have a fight with your spouse or, you know, you get a huge bill in the mail that you didn't know. And it's just like, oh, God, like I, you can't you can't function. But that that's over now. And you do that every day consistently. And uh, Grant talks about, there's a lot of things going on, but if you focus on like the top three things that you gotta do, you'll be fine. Don't worry about all those other little things, just keep trucking forward. And and that's, um that's so we're, we're gonna start doing the 905s. Amazing. I'm, I'm figuring out how to do them live and in person. Cause I want that energy in the room. Cause you can, you're watching a screen, but I, I don't have Sherry's level. She's been doing it a while. I don't have that level that that she brings, but I'm going to work on it. So me and me and Chris are going to drive down uh, Wednesday in a couple of days to go check it out, and I'm excited. Good, about good. That. Yeah. Hey, listen, and hook hey, me up with a lapel pin when I'm down there. I got you. You can, <laughs> I you, love you that can pin, actually dude. take this one. It's, yes, it's yours. Yes. It's yours. All right. Cool. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and be careful because the word then it comes out of your mouth, you're giving it power, right? Mm -hmm. Don't tell you don't have the energy. You you have tons of energy. Abe. Right. Yeah. Tons of energy. Tons of energy. Yeah. I do talk to my go see my kids. These kids are bouncing off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> no, hundred yeah. percent. And you know, it's all about the culture, right? It's not about the the what, but it's about the why. You know, it's not about what we are doing; is why we are doing it. You know, and one of the things that we do and we are really proud of is part of our our culture. Every single morning, we share a success story. Mm -hmm. Every single morning, yeah. right? It's either via video or one of our staff, you know, they, they read it based on an email they got. And that motivates our team to say, hey, it's not what we are doing, it's why we are doing it, right? Because right. our, our vision statement is to help 7 billion people to reach their true potential, right? And we are very far from that, right? I think, you know, we probably have about, you know, 6 million give or take followers and, you know, and it's just keep on growing, uh, but, what we do is hard. However, it pushes us in the morning when we see success story, when we see someone who two years ago, they were stuck in the system and they were just stuck in that nine to five mindset, right? Which they were just in this rat race. And today they're an entrepreneur, they're making 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, right? And just keep on growing and investing and understand about passive income, right? Right. And unfortunately, most people are so narrow-minded on one thing which they will never truly live an unbelievable yeah. experience you know um there's an amazing documentary on uh on netflix about uh countdown inspiration four you know uh, two weeks ago there was four civilians that were launched right from cape canaveral yeah i was watching a little that, bit of right? that actually yeah, yeah. so on netflix it's an unbelievable story and i really commend all of you to go watch that story, right? And those four individuals, they are very, very different, right? And there's this one guy, uh, Jared, right? Which he became a commander. His story is unbelievable. He's actually four days, uh, four days younger than me. Oh, wow. Right, exactly four days younger 21? than me. 21? 
<laughs> yeah, I wish. Yeah, 38. Okay. And he's a 38 years old billionaire. Wow. Right? Uh, I think he's worth about $2.4 billion. Wow. And, and I love his story because, you know, f uh, he actually founded his first company when he was 19. <laughs> right? Wow, that's awesome. He, he took his company public when he was 25. <laughs> right? I it, thought I accomplished a lot. And now <laughs> I'm realizing no. Exactly, yeah. right? And wow. what he said at the beginning, I love it. He said, you know, I have this mindset, then you have one chance at life, right? Mm -hmm. And it's your responsibility to make it a great one. Right. And when he said, I'm like, yes, 100%, right? That's what 10X is all about, right? Yeah. A, our, our slogan is success is your duty, right? You got to take full responsibility, obligation of making it a good one. Definitely. And the experiences then, then we live on this planet, there's so many unbelievable experiences, right? This planet has so much to offer, but it's unbelievable. And there is 70, uh, there's 7 billion people on this planet plus, and you know, our average age is what we are going anywhere between, you know, 80, 90 years, hopefully, you know, you and I will live hundred years, right? But you know, our time is limited and not everyone is living unbelievable experiences. Yeah. And one thing that I know as a, as a business coach, as a success coach, as a mindset coach, there will be a time. There will be a time and that time is coming for all of us because our time is limited, right? Mm -hmm. And there will be a time then we will know that we have another five minutes, 10 minutes left and we could feel it. We know then this is the end of this, this journey and this body anyway, right? Mm -hmm. God knows what's next. And the only thing we will remember is the moments we have right right definitely it's okay. and we will either look back and say man we could have done better or just go with a smile and say man that was an unbelievable life right yeah and, and the story of the inspiration for of those four individuals is unbelievable right you, uh, you I, I saw it. one of them was uh, a girl who had survived cancer That's right, as yeah. a young girl and um with the shriners club and then she went back to go work at the Shriners Club. Right. And then they launched her up in outer space. Right, with, with St. Jude. With, with St. Jude. St. Jude, yes, yes. yeah. Yeah, Saint yeah Jude that was an awesome Haley. story. She's like uh, unbelievable. Yeah. But the experience those people lived, right, you can never take that away back from them, right? Yeah. That those experiences are awesome. So, you know, what experience do you want to live? Yeah, definitely. That's, That's awesome. That's a really big part of it, 100%. Yeah. Awesome, cool. So, um, the other thing that I love about Grant, and then and then after that, we'll kind of wrap it, but uh, he encourages to read, he says, top CEOs of these Fortune 500 companies all read 50 books a year. And I'm listening to that, and the sarcastic person in me was like, that's bullshit. These guys don't read 50 <laughs> books, you know? And the truth is, I'm, I'm a lawyer. I went to law school. I graduated in 2009. I'm done reading books when I graduated. I'm never looking at another book, maybe <laughs> comics, because uh, I do like comics, as you can tell from the stuff in the back here. Um, but that's it. And he, you know what? I, I said, you know what? If he says it, let me listen to it. Because this guy is on to something. So I, I started reading books. And now I, re I, I read uh, Measure What Matters. I read all these other books about business, his growth, um, some some other stuff. And, and my whole mindset has grown even further. And so it's 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 pretty awesome. Um so, so I want to ask you if, if you're talking to someone and they're interested in um, business coach, uh, mindset coach, success coach stuff, um, what tidbit can you give them to look out for in a coach, such as yourself or anybody? What, what could you give them? And then give them your contact info and let them know you're the best. 100%, 100%. <laughs> I appreciate that, Abe. Yeah, so, you know, when it's come to, to mindset, it's something you gotta work on yourself all the time, right? It, it's, as you said it, even you went to law school and you had so many books, if you start, if you stop growing, you're gonna start dying, right? Yeah. Right, really inside out. So your mindset is, is everything. So you gotta keep on working on yourself, right? You gotta dig in the 10X rule. There's so many great books out there, right? You gotta keep on uh, doing that. And in my opinion, I think really your morning ritual, it's so important, mm -hmm. right? If I can give one advice really to 
to everyone, which I do to my student. And that's where we, when we start our, our journey within our coaching program, we really focus on the individuals, not just sales. Okay. Because your morning ritual of what you do in the morning, it will have an effect on the rest of the day. Your energy, your mindset, right? Yeah. And the reality is your mindset has a direct effect towards your attitude, right? So you got to really work on your mindset, really simple things. Just just exercising in the morning is not about just exercising. It's about the blood flow, right? Mm -hmm. By creating a, a great energy yeah. and going forward, you know? Uh, the days then, you know, I work out every single morning and it doesn't have to be uh, one hour, you know, sometime if I have to leave early, I just go to my garage. I, I have a great gym that I have set up 20 minutes, right? Listening to personal development, writing down your goals every single day. It just motivates you, keep you sharp because your mind is so busy, right? Mm -hmm. You think about laundry, you think about this, you think about that, you think about credit card, you think about your mortgage is nonstop. So you have to hack your brain in the morning, especially to focus on your goals. And I'm not talking about your to-do list, right? Mm -hmm. Your goals. Your life what, goals. Exactly, right? What is it that one thing you want, right, someday, right? Mm -hmm. what, what is that big goal? What is that passive amount of income that you want to have in your bank account where you can say, hey, I have a freedom of time. What is that amount, you know? Mm -hmm. Then let's do the math. Let's work on it. So having that morning ritual, it's extremely important versus lots of people, unfortunately, they're just plugged, you know, into this device. It's just yeah. part of their arm. First thing they do, just w wake up and they look at that or they go on, uh, you know, Clubhouse or uh, which, you know, there, there's some great content could be on Club Clubhouse. So don't get me wrong mm -hmm. if you're in the right room. Is Clubhouse going to sue us after this? <laughs> <laughs> but, but also, you know, news, etc. like, you know, uh, social media there, negative there news is, negative is, news I, I turned it off it just right, sucks me the right. life out of me um i totally agree with you i i started waking up 5 40 in the morning most days i'm not gonna lie <laughs> most days the goal is 5 40 a.m i'm in bed by nine if i can be so i can sleep from nine to five and then if i get up a little you know early i get up early but 5 40 i try to do it if i can i get up at six um, and it's not an all or nothing approach. If, like I said, like, like you said, if I could do 15, 20 minutes, I just go for a brisk walk, man. I'm, I'm getting old. I don't, my, my bones are falling apart here. I don't, <laughs> I, I was going to the gym and I'm like, forget about it with COVID. I was like, I'm not going to the gym. So I just started going for these walks, but it, it, my whole day changes for, I am so much more productive when I go for at least a 30 minute walk. Yep. And if I can't do 30 minutes, I'll try to do 15 because it's just, you got to do something. So that's awesome. 100%, 100%. And you know, like, uh, although I'm one of the senior coaches on the team, uh, I always like to give my time and, and meet with entrepreneur and see how we can help them, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about pitching them something. It's about understanding their needs and to see if you're the good fit, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so I really invite you guys to, you know, hit me up, right? I mean, uh, on Instagram, my Instagram is Coach Kaveh right? If you're on Instagram, you can also uh, reach out to me. I actually have a link on my solo.to for slash coach Kave, right? Solo.to for slash coach Kave, which when you go to my uh, digital business card, there is a link, then you can book a free 30 minute session. So I can meet with you and, uh, and give you some feedback, right? Ask you some question. So uh, and I'm sure Abe, we can put that, you know, Definitely. in the in the in the link there and our goal is to really add value right is th that's what's really all about to add value to entrepreneur and help them so they can grow personally they can grow their business and scale that business so they can hire more people and create a legacy for themselves so any way then we can do that is always a pleasure and we're there to serve awesome awesome well thanks for joining us coach Kave. we really appreciate you i appreciate everything you do for my team I for me you, for the company you're awesome and um thank you and so Get in touch with Coach Kaveh. He's awesome. It'll be worth your time. And thank you for joining us. Let's go 10X. 10X, baby. Yeah, 10X. Yeah. That's what I love about 10X. <laughs> this guy's awesome. Yes.